Should we talk about the bad emotions first? Let's get that. Let's get that out of the way. Let's get the bad emotions out of the way. I'm avoiding it. I, even I don't want to talk about it. So listen up, little loves. Everyone's loves, okay? You're all loves. But I'm speaking to the little loves. Little loves are the autistic children. So, and teens. So listen up, little loves. Sadness and depression. Depression is feeling sad every single day. And even if you want to feel happy, you can't. And sometimes you'll feel happy, and you'll, you'll go into school, yeah? And you may get triggered. Triggered is someone may say something. They may say, oh, your hair, oh, your face, oh, you're a weirdo. And all of a sudden, just like that, like that, you go from being okay to very, very, very sad. Now that's called trigger. Think of trigger, that's like a trigger, yeah? Because you're being bullied. So first of all, sadness, there's nothing wrong with it. Absolutely nothing wrong with sadness. Sadness is a very important emotion. It's a horrible one to feel, but I have to let you know that it is a very normal one. The only problem with sadness, my little loves, is that the big loves, the adults, pretend they're not sad. And everyone can feel sad about lots of different things. It's just that we may not know how to help each other. So here's some advice. Here's how to help each other when feeling sad. Number one, validate. Validate means this, okay? So you could do this, you could do this. Why are you sad over that? That's stupid. I would never be upset over such a silly thing. Or number two, I am so sorry you are sad. I don't understand why, but I am sorry that you are crying and I wish that I could make you feel better. And I was like, oh, okay. Because listen up, little loves. If you are sad because someone called you a name, if, someone, if you're sad because someone poked at you or picked on how you look or your hair or how you act, if you are sad because you are lonely, if you are sad because you are nervous, if you are sad because you are anxious and you don't know what's coming next, you're scared. If you're sad because of all of those things, I understand that. And I would be sad too. So the worst thing, what's worse than being sad? Worse than being sad is when people tell you you're silly for being sad. I think that's pretty bad, yeah? Hi, Dr. Sean May! Hi, Dr. Sean May! Sorry. He's like, you don't have to call me Dr. Sean May all the time. And I'm like, because I, 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 I always say the doctor, if they're the doctor, you know, it's, it's rude to not say it. I'm going to Paris with Dr. Sean May. Um, don't say Dr. Sean May. Damn it, I said it again. Sean May. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. Sean? We'll get there. We'll get there. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm going to Paris soon. But what's worse and feeling sad is people telling you you're stupid for it or, or silly. Now, there's one thing I'm going to talk about here that's very important if you're autistic, and it's sensory. Sensory sadness. Just made that up. Made that word too. Sensory sadness. I, 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 it would come up on the screen if I had the, the man. Hi, mum. And, and please send my love to Frank, my mum, my, my, my mummy and my daddy and Frank's daddy are looking after him today which means that I get to come on here and be agony horny and give you advice about emotions. Because this is what I tell my son. My son gets sad all the time. And he's allowed to be sad. He has lots of things to be sad about. He doesn't have many friends. He struggles at school. He struggles to speak what he wants to say. He struggles to communicate. He struggles to be understood. No wonder he's sad. And the thing that's helped him the most is giving him a space. I'm going to show you his safe space in a minute. So, being autistic, you have sensory sadness. Sensory sadness, my little loves, is when basically the lights, the sounds, if you go outside, you don't just hear birds and the wind and leaves rustling. 
and cats going meow, meow, and dogs going row, 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 row. good bark, yeah? Sorry, I have echolalia. And I have to do the bark again. I have to do the bark. It's unleashed, it's come back, it's come back. It's a good skill. I'm gonna keep the bark. But um anyway, it's oh no, I forgot what I was saying. That's really bad. <laughs> but sensory sadness is when all of these noises, those are natural noises that I was talking about, yeah? But you don't hear just that. You hear this. I love you all right. Get my way, Babs. When you're going to the shop, when you're going to the shop, you will hear all other people. You'll hear buses going past and breaking, squeaking. You'll hear all of it. And you may even hear it so much you cover your ears. You, 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 you become scared, you become tired, you become angry, you become sad, you become overloaded, okay? So when that happens, that's called sensory overload. And that means you need to, and this is the difficult part, when you come home from school, when you come home from shopping, when you come home from being out in the busy world, which can even make you very excited and very, <laughs> very happy. Sorry, <coughs> I have a bit of a cold. Very excited or very happy, or it can make you very tired, very sad, and very anxious. So this is a space that we made for my little boy. Um, this is this is mine and Frank's to share. This is our little bean bag, and 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 we can I bring it up and lean on it. I can cuddle it, look, like this, and hide behind it. I love um, throwing myself on things. So if I'm overloaded sensory, I might find it satisfying to do this. And stim, yeah? Stim, 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 stim. Because I'm gonna scream. If I don't stim, if I don't squeeze, if I don't move, if I don't hug and just hide like this from the world just for a minute and close my eyes and block it all out, I am going to scream. And this is the thing. The screaming, it feels great. You're getting out all that frustration. But I've learned that it scares other people and I've learned that it can hurt their ears. <laughs> so I have found ways as an autistic adult, and remember little loves, I'm a grown up, I'm a boring grown up, and I'm 32. So I've had a lot longer than you to, look, this is my little boy, Frank. Hi Frank. Would you like to see Frank's safe space? So Frank has, um, so right now, Oh no, I'll tell you in a minute. I'm getting all distracted. I'm sorry. <laughs> my ears are ringing, that's why. Yeah, I'm very loud, so I make my own ears ring. Um, so, okay, this is Frank's safe space. I don't know why I'm whispering, because he's not here. But I'm very respectful of his safe space, so automatically my voice goes lower. I'm in his space. Okay, it's his space. My voice goes lower, and I have a knock. Okay, you ready? So look, we've put extra <laughs> curtains up, because... He doesn't, you know, he's light sensitive, so he doesn't like too much light. He likes it quite dark, and then he likes, he has the New York lamp there, and then he has a globe, and those two both go on when he's here. Um, he has drums, which he loves to smash. When he gets angry, or just wants to express, actually. Maybe he's not even angry. Maybe he just wants to express himself. Again, the world, he loves looking at the world, and maps. So we've got things in here that he likes. There's his bed. These are his pillows he chose the other day. There's his Superman outfit because he's our Superman. And I told him the other day, I said to him, Frank, why do you think we have been bu buying you Superman clothes and dressing you up as Superman for years? And he's like this. And I was like, because you're our goddamn superhero, Frank. You're our superhero. You're sensitive like Superman. Superman becomes sensory sad. To kryptonite. So if you show Superman kryptonite, 
Like, without it, he's on top of the world. He's like, do 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 So I need to sit down one sec. I needed that stim break. That was a stim. So, um, Superman is sensory sensitive to kryptonite. It does his head in. If, he, if it's near him, he's like... It's not going do 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 do. It's like this. <laughs> he has a meltdown. He has a meltdown. So watch Superman and look at him and go, he's pretty autistic. And he's, you don't hate him. You don't think he should change. You don't think he should be different. In fact, you can see other people picking on Superman and bullying him for not knowing what the rules are, how to talk, um, what he's supposed to do. Yeah? Superman. I, I advise it because... Okay, so first of all, rule number one, the cat should not be in Frank's safe space, but the cat is in the safe space. So here is the safe space. First of all, we do a knock. There's the doctor, because he loves Doctor Who. We do the knock, it's... <laughs> that last one's important and usually his door's closed and I say Frank can I come in or can I open the door and he'll say yes or he'll say no if he says no then I go away so if he says no I leave because he doesn't want me in his space and that is fair because he's not ready it's the idea of the safe space <coughs> no <coughs> warning for flashing lights I'm just going to let these lights stop flashing okay so I need to get these lights to... I, I need to get new lights, basically. Okay, so... <clears throat> this is Frank's cupboard. And it's a little rubbish cupboard, but what we've done is we've just cleared it out. And... One sec. We've... Liam, his daddy, filled all of this up for him. So we've got that lamp there, which, it, which puts nice smells out. We've got the TARDIS. We've got another... I think we've got another globe or a moon. TARDIS again. There's the cat. Bo, you should not be here. Hi. Do you want to say hi, Bo? Meow. Hello. Hello, little loves. Hello, children. Meow. Oh, my God, Bo. Um, so, yeah, this is Frank's um, save area. I'm sorry about the flashing. And then what I do is I put these... Oh, damn. Sorry. My mic just came off. Okay, cool. And then what I do is you get the cushion and you throw it inside. Okay, and then you, it's really handy because we've got a little rail here to help get in. So I'm going in here now because Frank's not here, okay? But I would never come into this space without his permission. Permission means that he said yes. And that's very important, I think. So this is where Frank can be. What do you think? Would you like a safe space? Would you like a safe den? Do you think it would help when you feel too sad and sensory sadness? Or if you feel triggered because someone said something or the teacher didn't like your drawing or told you to sit still, yeah? Would a little space like this for you to go to so you can draw or you can play on your phone and you can calm down and think about the day. Would that feel nice? I'm sorry about all these lights. I'm going to have to leave in a minute because I know some of you are very light sensitive. But look, it's a little tiny. Ooh, stim. Visual will stim. Visual will stim. So that's the reflection on the paint that I like. Ow. Okay. So. Anger. What often happens is if you don't have your emotions validated, so if you don't have your sadness, if you don't have anyone saying to you, it's okay to be sad, I understand why you're sad, sadness is normal, you're going to get pretty angry, aren't you? Yeah? You're going to get kind of fed up of being told day in, day out, that you've not got a headache, that you're not seeing lights, that you're not overwhelmed, that you can just do this, that these clothes aren't itching you, you're just being fussy, you're gonna get angry. And I understand that. 
So first of all, I validate your anger, which means it is okay to be angry. But there are boundaries. And boundaries mean that we cannot express anger in certain ways. And I'm going to be clear about that. So what do I mean? I mean, we cannot hit. We cannot push. We cannot shove. We cannot break other people's things just because they made us sad or angry. And I know that's hard. That's, that's, that's hard to hear because then you feel bad. You feel like a monster because that's how you've been coping. Yeah? So let's just start again. Let's just recognise that you've been dealing with anger in a way which isn't the greatest, but you didn't know how to. So it's about not even forgiveness. It's about starting again, which is, okay, I'm angry. And telling the people around you, I'm angry. What do I do about this emotion? So I used to say when I was younger, I am angry. What do I do about this horrible emotion that I don't even want? That's what I used to do, yeah? Uh, can imagine me now. I had this haircut as well. <laughs> really angry. Um... Sorry, an email just came through. Um, I'm trying to block it out. Oh, hi, Kelly's daughter. How you doing? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Thank you. Oh, yes, you built your son a fort with sheets. I used to build forts um, all the time. Lovely. Okay, so um, anger is about how, how can I be angry in a way that's safe? How can I be angry in a way that doesn't hurt people? And often I find talking to someone or writing down the anger, as long as they don't punish me, and, you know, it means I can be angry in a way which is allowed. Because this is the thing I keep trying to say. Feeling angry, feeling sad, feeling scared are all normal emotions. What's not normal is having to feel them all the time. And I'm just so sorry that you feel them so much. But I promise you it's not you. And it's not even you being autistic. We desperately need to find other autistics to be with. And, and, and people who understand this, this movement. and <laughs> Wanting to do things differently wanting to be curious about how the world works and not in the social plane rules is is you know so um anger anxiety okay so anxiety anxiety is a horrible one anxiety is basically being scared um being in fear and um i have a tip for you with anxiety okay so when we are anxious when we are anxious, you won't you won't even know it sometimes until it's a bit too late. And sometimes anxiety can make you angry. Yeah? Being scared can make you angry, can make you want to fight to protect yourself. So here's a few tips. When I'm anxious, by accident, I end up clenching my fists and I actually don't breathe very well. I go <gasps> go red in the face, yeah? <sighs> Ugh. Before you know it, your body, what happens is your body tells your brain, she's not breathing. She's not breathing. That's what the brain thinks. It thinks you're not breathing enough. So then it tells you you're in danger, which is, oh my God, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. And you can trick your mind into telling yourself again you are safe but it comes from breathing so if you're doing this like I do <gasps> and <laughs> panting that's panting it's not normal breathing it's because you're scared <laughs> yeah stopping taking a big deep breath in <sighs> all the way out and again (sighs) 
but it's really important that you breathe from your tummy because if you breathe here you're taking a big gulp which again is telling your body you're in danger if you breathe from the tummy so breathe in from your nose and breathe out for your mouth in for your nose out for your mouth and if you put your hand on your tummy this is your diaphragm you will feel this big organ here filling up your lungs with air and squishing the air back out and filling it up and squishing the air back out and I want you to concentrate on that feeling which is the and it rises from the tummy first and it comes up to the chest. Watch again. So it's not here, here, because those two are very different. And this one tells you you're in danger. This one literally releases energy that can help you relax but the difficult thing is when you are anxious you won't want to breathe like that your instincts will want you to keep panting and fighting so it's good to sometimes have someone not saying much but maybe just breathing next to you i would sit next to my son and not say anything and i would just begin to breathe slowly next to him and before I knew it he would be picking up and, and, and breathing too so that's a, maybe a tip for anxiety another thing for anxiety my little loves is stims so you know fidgeting with things this is a pen I like to fidget with um visual stims so I like looking at sand these are all things that can relax Music, dancing, yeah, these are all things that can help relax. Fidget spinners, um, squishy stress balls, yeah, I was supposed to have them up here, but I haven't got them. A big bean bag which you can throw yourself on and then hug and go, yeah. Okay, so let's talk about, I've talked about sensory sadness, I've talked about sadness, I've talked about anxiety, I've talked about anger, and I'm, I'm zooming through these because. I want to get to the other emotions. I want to talk about other positive emotions, okay? First of all, little loves, no one is happy all the time. It's not possible. And it's confusing because on TV, you will see this. Hi there, kids. So today we're going to look at Andrea's card who came in all the way from Devon. Happy birthday, Andrea. I'm not very happy, really. But it's my job to wear this smile. Little loves, no wonder you're confused. No wonder you think, why aren't I happy? Why can't I be happy? What's wrong with me? They're not happy too. Not all the time. And social media, this is the thing, if you're on social media before the age of 13, get your little bums off, okay? Because unless you're with a parent, you shouldn't be on social media before the age of 13. I know I sound so boring, I know I sound very agony naughty doing that, but it's not good for you because all you will see is this. I'm living my life, I'm living my life on a boat, on a beach, and you'll go, why... Why do I have that? But it's not real. They probably just saw the boat, jumped in it, took a picture and ran off. Honestly. Honestly. So, happiness. Happiness is what everyone wants. Everyone wants to be happy. Why? Because it feels good. It feels good to be happy. However, not being happy can make you very sad. Knowing that you're not happy can make you even sadder. Seeing people around you having fun, playing games, interacting, looking like they're happy can make you feel angry and sad and alone. But 
I'm here to tell you that there are so many more emotions than being happy that are just as important and that they feel just as good. So it doesn't matter if you're not happy right now. I know it matters to you. I know you wish you weren't. I know you wish you were happier. But don't blame yourself, is what I'm saying. Because reward yourself. Reward yourself for feeling calm. Calm is, ah, relaxed, safe, still, comfortable, interested, curious. These are all amazing emotional states of being that just, you don't see it. In fact, being curious and being happy in your own autistic way is sometimes punished so you hide from what makes you happy but I want you to go to it I want you to go to what makes you happy the way that I went to this this makes me happy I don't care if it looks strange it makes me happy it makes me very happy it makes me happy touching it it makes me happy looking at it I love all the colours I love colours colours makes me happy colours make me stimmy colours make me go on about it again and again and again and now I'm staring at it I'm staring at, at the green and how vivid it is it makes me happy and I'm not weird for talking in this way I actually think it's great that I can get so excited about colour but then it's like <gasps> no one else is like this so I'm just a weirdo and a freak and a loser do you think those things about me or do I think those things about me do I think those things about me because people have told me that yeah and did I keep those words that they told me and I kept them and they stuck here and they hurt. They stick like needles, like thorns. And I've been learning to get them out and throw those horrible, nasty words away. Throw them away. They're not yours. They're not yours. So the next time you hear loser or freak or lose, uh, loner or anything like that, remember that they are not your words. Those are the words of bullies. Those are the words of people who may not understand you. Those are the words of people who need more education around who you are. But they're not your words. And um, I want you to throw them away. So many of you are oppositional, okay? So I want you to oppose the words. No, I'm not. I'm not that. And you say it again and again. I'm not. I'm not stupid. I'm excited. I feel happy. I feel safe. I feel curious. Please try. My little loves, please try. It's hard because at first you you say it and you don't believe it. Mm. This is helpful to you as an adult. Oh, thank you, Pam. I mean, this last part of my chat is directed towards the teens. So you know how I say I'm talking to children and teens? There's some parts which are more aimed at children, but I'm not announcing it. I'm just kind of, I change my narrative slightly so that, the teenagers can understand what I'm saying here is that this mental health spiral that is in your head has been put there by other people and you're none of these things and when you realise that you are none of these things that they are saying it because you're different and that's what bullies do they like to pick on people who are different it's freeing because I want you to feel good about feeling calm I want you to feel good about stimming I want you to feel good about creating. I want you to feel good about being curious and interested 
I don't want you to shut down from that because that is what makes us unhappy. And what I'm saying is if you feel safe, if you feel calm, and if you value those states of being, those emotions, you will become happy over time. It's not a marathon. No, I did it wrong. Okay, so look, everyone makes mistakes. It's not a race, it's a marathon. See, that would have been so better if I didn't make that mistake. See? Perfectionist, little miss perfectionist, little miss perfectionist. So many of you are little perfectionists, I know. So, what makes me happy is helping other people. Makes me very happy. Makes me happy to see them happy even if I can't be happy. But I become happy seeing them happy. So, whether it's helping animals, whether it's helping your parents, whether it's helping yourself, helping, helping is a constructive way of being, I think. I think it's a good thing to do with your time on this earth, help other people. If you see them upset, even if they've been bad to you, even if they've been bad to you, if you see them upset, show them kindness. That's what I used to do. That's hard. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you a stim dance. Should we do it? And I'm gonna do it to the song Happy because stim dancing makes me happy. So let's go, let's go. I hope you enjoyed that chat on emotions. I'm sorry it wasn't very, very good. Um, basically, what I'm gonna do is, I'm, 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 this is my second um, live for the kids. So um, I'm gonna basically, oh kids, look at this, are you ready? So I down my neck, sorry. Um, so this is the bean bag, but I'm gonna throw it down the stairs. That was satisfying to watch. Right, because I'm not carrying that. There's a shortcut. Shortcut. So yeah, um, so the beanbag's coming with me. Um, some of the children may have noticed I walk a little bit funny. I have um, a condition called hypermobility. Lots of you little loves will know this because you're naturally hypermobile because you're children, but you're supposed to get really strong when you grow up and um I didn't <laughs> so I, I I I don't know are you ready you're gonna not like this kids you ready you're gonna go Ehh. my shoulder goes round in a circle and in and out it should be back here but it, it keeps it falls out so when I said ah my neck before it's because this rolled forward and hurt my neck so it's called Ellis Danlos syndrome Ready, kids? Here's, here's a trick you, you're going to think. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh. It's collagen. So basically, I've got too much of it. Uh. And it's why, um, it's, why, um, it's why I use a crutch. It's why I use a wheelchair. And it's why my ribs slip out of place and joints come out of place. Because my skeleton's too big for this, basically. I have an adult skeleton with the flexibility of a child. It's not a good combination. Yeah? And people have fetishized um, flexibility a lot because of, you know, yoga and Pilates and ballet. It's quite a desirable thing. Why am I talking like this? No, I'm, I'm doing the kids, I'm not talking to the adults, sorry. Right, okay, let's do the happy song. Right, I'll show you stim dancing. Right, one sec. Okay. Okay. I hope this works. Okay, I'm gonna feel silly dancing in front of you now because I always get a bit nervous, but yay! And I've put um hot. Okay. So let me just get here. I'm not wearing the right the right skirt for this, goodness me. Right. Oh, my 
join in if you feel inclined. Inclined means if you want to. I got the blanket. Stim dancing makes me very happy and I, I do it every day and it's just an opportunity for me to be really silly. Yeah? Why not? Feeling really happy. Yeah, you get the point. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next week. Um, what should we talk about? Clap along if you know what happiness is to you. I can't sing. It doesn't matter. If it makes you happy, sing. It's a great thing. Come on. Clap along if you know what happiness is to you. Clap along if you know. Feel? Ready? Come on. There we are. It's the come on at the end. Come on. I said it in the wrong place. I said it in the wrong place multiple times. It's cool. End live stream.